The story is about one of the deadliest creatures known to man, the mother bear, but it may not be what you would expect, as it is a story about overcoming one's natural instincts and fears in order to turn to the last creature you might think of for help. In today's society, it is often not easy to understand each other, because the key skills of patient listening and kindness are those many people have forgotten. Many people just look after themselves and ignore anyone less fortunate than themselves, and they may need a little help to get back on the right track. That kindness can help a lot of people, but is often seen as a weakness that leaves you trampled on by anyone bigger or more powerful than you because it seems almost impossible to understand other people in these days and ages, but the story we are going to tell you today shows that a little patience kindness and understanding can help those who really need help. Fifteen years ago, an old man who had been a ranger all his life lived in a small village in the Coriola region with his grown-up daughter, husband, and their young son. One day, as usual, he went into the local forest in order to get some fresh air. He loved visiting the woods because he loved the natural beauty they had and all the fresh food they offered to anyone looking for it. On this special day, the old man went to look for some blueberries, so that he could treat his grandson as much as he liked fresh berries, and what could be fresher than the fruit in the forest. The old ranger knew the area like the back of his hand, so he decided to venture deep into the woods, and he could find the really big berries, to his grandson's surprise. He was looking for the man, and without wasting time, squatted down, and began to pick up. He found the fruit, and put it into the basket he had brought, for picking berries was quite a relaxing and healing activity. Foresters soon lost traces of their surroundings. He soon realized that he had come to a big and deep hole, but he did not know how he had managed to get there. Suddenly he heard an angry roar, which he knew meant danger. The roar came from a huge bear. The animal seemed to have sensed that the man was invading its territory and made it clear that he was definitely not welcome there. Luckily, the old forester knew that bears like to wander through these forests, so he did not come unprepared. He quickly picked up the gun he carried with him in case there was exactly the same situation as the one he found himself in. He fired a shot into the air, hoping to scare away the huge beast. The animal ran to the hole in fear of the noise but did not seem to be in a hurry to leave the area, and there seemed to be something, and the bear was the forester who scanned the surrounding forest, and soon realized why the bear had not run off on the floor not far from where he was standing, and there lay a cub. After careful observation, the old man noticed that the cub was trapped in a trap and could never get out again. Mother bear is just protecting her baby and doesn't know what other way to help it. The man knew that if he did not help the small animal, it would die in a trap because it could not eat, drink, or protect itself from other predators. The forester decided to risk his life to save the bear. Why is this such a risk for men? If the mother bear thinks he is trying to hurt her baby in any way, she will attack and possibly kill the old man. The forester knew the risk. I approached the cub carefully and took out his knife. A few minutes after several tents were filled, he quickly began to open the trap, which suddenly opened and the cub broke free and didn't want to push his luck anymore. The man left the area in a hurry and walked all the way through the woods to his home. The man felt as if he had been followed. He knew the most likely culprit was the bear. He quickened his pace and finally broke through the tree line and entered the safe open space. Once he felt safe enough from the woods, he turned around and saw only the adult bear standing behind the tree. She looked at the ranger as if she wanted to say thank you for helping her cub, but she didn't know what to do. The man didn't understand and just left the forest to go home about a year later the old ranger sat at home waiting for his daughter and son-in-law they I went to town to buy a new crib because they were expecting another child but the young couple were late and this made suddenly an old man's neighbor ran into his house and began shouting that something terrible had happened a bear was walking up and down the village covered in blood. And with something in his teeth the ranger quickly grabbed his gun and followed his neighbor into the street. They met several other people in the village and started shooting into the air in the hope that they would scare the bear back into the forest, but it didn't work. After noticing the rangers in the group, the huge beast bowed its head, but there was some kind of red parcel on the ground and walked away to hide behind the tree. The ranger realized it was the same bear from a year ago. 
He approached the object from which the animal had fallen, and he was shocked to see what lay on the ground wrapped in fragments of his daughter's clothes, a newborn baby. The old man was afraid of what might happen to his daughter. His arms began to follow the bear into the wood, as if he knew what the man wanted, and the animals began to take him through the forest, and they soon met a rickety, rotten old bridge, which had not been used for many years. Surprisingly, however, there have been recent attempts to use it, but their weight has been so heavy that the decaying planks have broken. The ranger looked under the bridge and saw his daughter and son-in-law lying on the rocks under the bridge. He climbed down as fast as he could, and when he reached the couple he noticed that his daughter was still alive, but unfortunately her husband was not spared. A rescue team was called in and after the woman was taken to the nearest hospital for treatment, she had stabilized and recovered enough to speak, and she explained everything. It turned out that she persuaded her husband to take her to an old place she had loved since she was a child, although their attempt to cross the abandoned bridge and fall forced the woman to Los Angeles, during which time she thought she had seen a bear, but she could not be sure because she soon lost consciousness. After hearing this story, the ranger began to understand that the baby of the beast he had saved had paid off her debts by saving the man's new grandson, and she had done so in time, for without the bear's help the old man might have lost all the people he cared about. At that moment, the old man also realized why the animal never attacked him a year ago, and she wanted to say thank you for saving her cub's life, but the man just didn't understand. The girl ran from her mom to the bear, but what the bear did was appalling. It's impossible to understand the animal world, and any animal, from a midge to a buffalo, can understand that. But the lives of some carnivores are a mystery to us, and we can only guess how they lived. For example, wolves are animals to be feared, feared, and respected. However, few people know that their attitude towards a person can be different. It depends on certain circumstances. For example, Black bears are generally less aggressive and more tolerant of people. They usually live near human settlements, whereas grizzlies prefer to stay away from human settlements and are often extinct from populated areas. Black bears are excellent climbers. Three years ago, my beloved niece Lisa passed away. I didn't go to the funeral, I was just taken into the army. All I know is that my niece died of cardiac arrest. My older sister, Melissa, was a single mother out of wedlock. Lisa was born a healthy girl. Our parents thought their granddaughter was like this, so she grew up to be the cutest child, always giving the impression of being in a good mood and rarely getting sick. But at the age of three, Lisa was silent. She was completely silent. She stopped talking and started having nightmares. She often screamed and cried in her sleep without voicing her problems. As my brother James said, she had a feeling that her lips were sealed because Lisa had no reason to keep silent. My brother talked to the doctor and they said maybe someone in the nursery had offended Lisa because kids at that age are so fragile. But the fact is that her mother abandoned her. So she was silenced by the pressure. James decided to take the girl to get close to nature for a rest, maybe Lisa's situation will get better. Our grandfather lived near Cresnado and had been a ranger for ten years. There is a very small village in the forest where he lives. There are only twelve houses in the village, only six of which are usable. Grandfather himself lived in the forest, but he also had a private house in the village. So he gave that house to James and his daughter to rest in. But even after weeks of rest, Lisa didn't feel better. She still didn't sleep well and was reticent. And in the end, this is what happens on a walk in the forest. My grandfather found a badly injured bear cub. One of the animals bit him hard. James is a veterinarian, which is why his grandfather brought him a bear cub for treatment. He said he didn't want to mess with him. Of course, my brother is a person who likes animals, and he knows how to find common ground with him. They brought the animal into the house and he wasn't even afraid it was a predator. As the cub was so badly injured and exhausted that he barely had the strength to move in two days, James helped the cub slowly limp to his feet and he was able to walk. Plus my brother really loves the bear and it has had a positive effect on his daughter Lisa as well, she's become active. 
She smiled and even slept through the night without waking up or screaming. After a few more days, the results were still positive and the baby slept well. James decided to go to his daughter's room to see if Lisa was actually sleeping soundly. Opening the door to the room, she was a little surprised that Gray was sitting on Lisa's feet on the bed, staring intently at a spot on the wall that was what they named the bear. James thought Lisa had brought Brown to sleep in her room, but since he was a predator, her sister decided to take him out of the room and let him sleep in the hallway. But when she touched him, he growled softly. Startled by such insolence, James took him suddenly in his arms, carried him out into the corridor, laid him on the pillow, and decided to sit in the kitchen for a while and drink his tea again. At this moment, Gray entered the daughter's room again. But actually ten minutes later, she heard Brown's soft growl and approached him. He stood at the door of Lisa's room and growled. James opened the door, and Brown ran in, jumped onto the bed, and got into the same position again. James and Lisa lived in the house for a year in total. Brown lives with them, and although he is an adult independent bear, he knows the forest like the back of his hand. He was also good at hunting, but every night he would come home and spend the night in Lisa's room. He did the same thing every day, sitting on the bed at her feet, staring at one spot, growling every now and then. James didn't mind at all, because after Brown started spending the night with Lisa, her nightmares stopped. During this year, she became an ordinary child who could play, laugh and sleep well. The only thing that wasn't right was that Lisa still didn't speak at the end. The older brother decided to return to a city closer to civilization, her beloved job. Lisa feels great. Maybe she doesn't communicate enough with the kids to worry about Brown. She knew that this was a very powerful beast and that he could survive without her help. As soon as her sister returns to town, Lisa's nightmares return. She barely slept. The girl died within days. James is just beginning to understand what it's like to watch a child die right in front of your eyes. The brother was completely desperate. He didn't know what to do, how to help his daughter. Lisa died four days after they arrived home. Words cannot describe what happened to James. For a long time he could not believe that his daughter was gone. It was as if the soul had left her body. My mom said that after Lisa died, she went to a woman who explained everything and said that it was actually the strength that came to James. However, Lisa herself was unaware of her death. But when God saw something that wanted to destroy an innocent soul, he sent her a guardian angel. As we learn, Brown was protecting Lisa until she was taken. James is still blaming himself. He went back to the village to find that Brown still came to Lisa's room, sat on her bed, and did not leave for the forest until morning. The bears couldn't stop wowing us. These photos show an adorable rescued brown bear fishing with his owner on a boat in Russia. A bear named Archie and Veronica Ditchka enjoy fishing together in a forest lake in their hometown of Novosibirsk in southern Siberia. Veronica rescued Archie from a defunct safari park two years ago and kept him as a pet. In one of the most Russian things to happen in Russia, a woman rescued a brown bear and ended up becoming its best friend. In fact, their friendship developed so fast, they even went fishing together. And there are photos to prove it. The Epoch Times explained how Veronika Ditchka of Novosibirsk in southern Siberia took care of the brown bear after the safari park where the bear lived closed down. Two years later, she and the brown bear, now named Archie, continue to have a strong bond that not only keeps them close to each other, but also participates in very human activities together, like boating and fishing on the lake. Now you're probably wondering why Veronica doesn't let Archie do his thing and let him back into the Siberian landscape which is his birthright. It turns out there is good reason for this. We rescued him from a safari park, but we couldn't release him back into the wild because he had spent his entire life in captivity, she explained. Well, fine. This extraordinary friendship between man and bear seems unbelievable, the Daily Mail reports. The two have been photographed together, if not all photos and some videos. Sure, some of them feature two people fishing, but some are just posing in pure Russian snow. 
Additionally, the South African pointed out that, as expected, Veronica has her own TikTok page that showcases her adventures with Archie on full display. Veronica shared her story with the media. Archie spends every day with us and is madly in love with the water. When I take him to new places he absolutely loves it. We are like family, we share food and fall asleep in my arms when we are scared, hiding behind me. We rescued him from a safari park, but we couldn't release him back into the wild because he's been in captivity his whole life. If their friendship isn't cute enough for you, I honestly don't know what is. I mean even I would never consider a wild bear as a pet because I'm terrified. Honestly, I'm in awe of their friendship. Their connection left me with only one thought. If you don't harm or portray any danger to animals, they can't harm you. Unlike humans, they will only attack if they think you are a threat. A video shows off their quality time on the water as the pair cherish each other's company just like any other friend. Veronica is cuddling your furry friend while they hold a fishing rod. The main reason is that bears are wild animals and the concept of friendship is a human construct.